The man who wrote it, Brett Champion knows this from uh, both sides of the fence, as it were. He is a fraud expert because at one time, formerly, he used to be a con man. Uh, he joins us now. He has been clean, as it were, for a long Because you went to prison and decided that wasn't the right thing to do. Yes, that's true. I spent four years in federal prison for perpetrating fraud. And while I was in prison, I decided I can't do this any longer. So I decided to take a negative situation and turn it into a positive situation by writing a book on fraud prevention and dedicating the rest of my life to help educating America on how not to become victims of fraud. Now, you've been out for a year, Brett. Yes. Was it a philosophical change or a practical change? In, in other words, are you a different human being than you were when you were doing this stuff and thought it was OK? Well, the Brett Champion today is definitely a different Brett Champion than the old Brett Champion. This Brett Champion does not want to go to prison. This Brett Champion realizes if you can't beat him, join him. And this Brett Champion's been doing really good trying to help people not become victims of fraud. I'm a fraud expert for Dateline NBC. I just did a special on fraud prevention, which aired about a week ago. And it's really helping a lot of people. Are you from around here? Yes, I'm from Beverly Hills, California. Ah. Well, there you are. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that in mind, we, we talked uh, off camera about boiler room operations where people are making phone calls. Sometimes if you get a call, hi, this is from Beverly Hills, or you're mailing a check to an address at a fancy place, that, that is part of the deception, is it not? Very yes, often. it is. It's part of the deception. Everybody thinks Beverly Hills is where all the money comes from. So if somebody's calling you, it might be a good idea to send some money. But the best thing to do when someone calls you over the telephone and asks you for money is to tell them you don't have any money and hang up the phone quickly or you might become a victim of a fraud and lose all your money. We were just hearing on the radio this morning that the elderly so often, because they are polite, uh, just don't hang up, but that the key is hang up as soon as you know what, who you're talking to. Uh, in, in telemarketing fraud in particular, is there good news or is it still uh, some, something running amok that we're still naive about? It's all bad news and you just have to hang up the phone when someone calls you and get off the phone quickly because they're promising you things that they're not going to deliver. In fact, they call up the elderly, they tell them you want a brand new 1998 Lincoln Town car. It's a $30,000 car and all you got to do is pay the shipping and tax on the car and you'll get your car. And then they send them a little tiny matchbox car. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. we, uh, we put together, along with Brett, uh, some graphics to show you, five ways to protect yourself against fraud. And uh, our way number one is ask for written information. But that perpetuates the conversation. Yes, you don't even want to be a part of the conversation. Once you tell the perpetrator at the other end of the phone that you don't have any money, they're not going to want to talk to you anymore. So or should, you. should you not ask for written information, or is that a way to get them to hang up? I would not ask for written information. I would just get off the phone and hang up, tell them you don't have any money, and they won't call you back. They have a list of hundreds of other people they can call and ask for mm. money. Let's go to our next uh, graphic here. This will uh, tell us more. Take time making decisions, because they're, they're, I, this is what has actually happened to me. My loan experience was with somebody called about an investment opportunity of some sort. And it was, it, you know, crazy story, but it was $500. It was and it, could, it was attractive. We will have a messenger at your home within an hour. Mm. And that's when I knew. They were, they were going to come to my, I didn't have to mail the check, they would come and pick it up. Mm -hmm. Right, the advance fee loan scam is a very popular scam being perpetrated on everyone. That's where they tell you, you will qualify for a loan of any amount with bad credit or no credit. All you got to do is pay this little fee up front. And of course, you pay your fee and you don't get anything in return. Now, just a given is that you never give out financial information about yourself. I oh. Isn't that a given? Absolutely, Stephanie. The worst thing you can do is pick up the phone and someone can call you and trick you and say, hi, I'm from the American Express Credit Card Corporation. And Stephanie, you just qualified for an American Express Platinum Card with a $50,000 line of credit. We're going to send that to you right now. But just to make sure it's really you, Stephanie, give me your social security number for security purposes. And if you have any other credit cards, like a MasterCard, give me that number mm -hmm. and your date of birth. And then with all that information, they can get ID in your name, get credit cards sent to them, and they can start using your credit to their benefit. Oh, gosh. Let's uh, throw up the next graphic here uh, of other things to do. Never, as you just said it, never give personal or financial information. Yes. And you just gave the example why. Oh, what's the next one? Check with the Better Business Bureau for complaints. I've heard some people say that they like to keep these folks on the line until they know enough about who they are so that they've got a name to give the Better Business Bureau. Is it, is it worth that effort? No, it's not. I personally don't think the Better Business Bureau does anything to help victims of fraud. I would say if you're the victim of a fraud over the telephone, 
contact the FBI Wire Fraud Division in the area where you live and in the area where you feel the fraud was perpetrated. If it was done through the mail, contact the United States Postal Inspection Service along with local police in your city. How were you caught? I was caught by the FBI. And what were you doing specifically? Well, the last fraud that I was involved with was selling shares in oil wells that didn't exist. And I was eventually caught and sent to prison for it. Mm. So uh, investments like that, just very quickly, rattle out land investments. What other things people should be wary about when people say there's a terrific opportunity in what, what, what? Well, for investors, they're selling wireless cable, specialized mobile radio, oil wells, deals in motion pictures. <laughs> um, the contest thing is very big among the elderly. Mm -hmm. And an important thing about the elderly is they should really, really watch out, Sam, because what's going to happen is if they lose all their money... That's no time to make it back. Right. Plus, what their kids are going to do is figure they're not competent to take care of their assets anymore. Ah, uh, yes. They'll get conservatorship in court and put them in a home. Let's put up an 800 number, the National Fraud Information Center. If you want to find out more about this, think you've been scammed, 1-800-876-7060. Brad Champion's book, I presume, is in bookstores. Yes. If it's not in your bookstore, your bookstore can order it. It's called America's Guide to Fraud Prevention. And it's a good book. Well, you cleaned up pretty well, it right. seems to Thank me. You. Thank Our you. Thank you. Our champion, Brett. thanks very much. Very thanks. Good. We have a more live show when we come right back.